Hey guys, welcome back to part three of scroll sawing the wall hanging grandfather clock. As you can see, we've got quite a few pieces scrolled out and we've got a few more pieces left to go. So let's get cutting. Now I'm stack cutting this piece here. The next thing I'm going to do is work on this section right here. And my plan for this is to simply come all the way down to this point. Then I'm going to back the blade out, spin it around, back into it, and then I'll take off in this direction and stop, come back, and then take off in that direction and stop. When you're stack cutting, it's very important that you make sure your blade is tight, but that the blade is also 90 degrees to the table. And you want the front teeth to be cutting into the wood. You don't want to be putting any side pressure or anything like that on there. I'm going to back in and I'm going to hold pressure against the back of the blade and I'm just going to slowly rotate the work around until I get into that line and then take off in that direction. Now that I've got those two cuts done, I'm going to eat away at the line and then put the side of the blade right onto the line and march off in another direction. Now when you have straight lines like this, it's really important that they be good and straight because if you look at the overall picture of this, you can see that they need to match and they need to be straight. The best way to do that, especially if you're new starting out, is to take your time and just move the project in a little bit and if that blade looks like it's going to wander, take your foot off of your pedal, square it back up, you know, and then take off again. But if, you, if you've got a good feel for your scroll saw, you're going to know about how much angle you need to put in. And then you'll be able to march off and then make, make teeny tiny little corrections as long as you're moving slow in order to keep that line good and straight. When you're doing your stack cuts, make sure that you're constantly checking the bottom side to make sure that your blade is maintaining 90 and that you're not having any cupping or anything and that it looks as good as the top side. Now I'm going to come back and clean up this straight line just a little bit. I'm a little bit high right there so I'm going to use the just the uh, very edge of the teeth. I'm going to put it right up against it use the edge of these teeth to clean it up real good. Now, kind of like that first cut I showed you, there's another tight V cut. What I've done is come all the way to the line. Now I'm going to spin it out, bring it back to a waist area that's open, turn it around, back it in, and now I can just angle the piece, start it up, let it find the line, and then take off in this new direction. And when you get to a point like this where you've got a tight curve, you've got to be thinking ahead in your, in your mind where your hands are going to be, and either pulse the pedal, that way you can do it nice and slow, or be ready to move your hands and spin the piece, uh, but no faster than the blade can work. We want to let the blade do the work. We don't want to be forcing the work in or putting side pressure on. And there you have it. Now let me give you a little trick and secret to scroll sawing. A lot of times when people get off the line, they'll get right back to it real fast, and that's a mistake. Come back to it nice and slow and even based on your pattern and the line that you have that you're dealing with, especially on curves and things like that. If you get off of it a little bit, people are never going to notice when you get off of the line a little bit once you take that pattern off. Whether it's an inside curve or an outside curve, just, if nothing else, parallel the line and come back to the line. When that pattern comes off, nobody's ever going to know about it. With all the scroll work, once you pull the pattern off, you're never going to know. And there we go.
Now there's one more thing I'm going to do with this piece now that I've got it cut out. Before I take this tape off, which is binding the two together, I'm going to take it over to the table mounted belt sander and I'm going to give, I'm going to sand it and then I'm going to flip it and sand it again so that we have, we're absolutely assured that both pieces are squared to one another and they're nice and flat and we won't have any problems when we go to assemble it. Now the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and cut out this back wall, this outer perimeter. I got a few inside cuts to do on it, and, but once I get that done I'll have an entire page of plans cut out and ready to go and then just a few more pieces. I tell you for sure a big piece like this is where having a 20 inch throat from the blade to the back comes in really handy with this DeWalt. You'd be hard pressed to do this on a smaller scroll saw machine because it's just so big. You could do it, but what you would have to do is just use a spiral blade and shift the work left, right, forward, backwards. It can be done, even on a small one, but having this DeWalt sure is nice. got the top piece scrolled out there looking real good. I got a bit of a bow to it so I'm going to put some more weight on it. That way we can draw that out while it's just sitting there. All I got to do now since I've got that entire page scrolled out is move to the next page. These are going to be stack cut together. I got that, that, and that, and then the little top crown there. And we will be ready for finishing and assembling. So not much at all left to do. I'm only about 11 and a half hours into the project. And keep in mind, I'm having to set up camera shots and lighting and stuff like that. So I would probably be a lot faster along on this project if I didn't have to do all that. Well, guys, until next time, this is Reaganite 71. I appreciate you watching. Thank you for subscribing, and we'll see you next time.